Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to GOD Traders Tea Time with me, Dyson Charles, because today is the 23rd of April 2020. So we have welcome everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's afternoon recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a view of the charts, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so uh, now then, uh, just uh, before we jump into the charts, as always, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD research page, which you can also check out on a daily basis because we up, up, update it every day. So, yep, uh, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there. So, um, jumping in also very quickly into the statistics. Now, this is the figure from this morning. Um, so, let me just quickly update it here. So, um, so yeah, it has risen a little bit, not much. So, uh, yep, that's good news. Um, and of course, you have the total amount of infected as well, kind of uh, stayed uh, stayed okay, I would say. So, um, jumping into uh, jumping into the uh, charts now. The first one I want to touch on here is the S and P 500. Now, yesterday basically remained still but remained in the same territory between these two levels. Now I spoke about these uh, yesterday, so basically not much has changed uh, from the yesterday's outlook. Uh, we still need to see a clear breakthrough one of these highlighted areas before we could consider a further short-term directional move. So basically, in other words, to see uh, some lower levels, slightly lower levels, we would like to see a nice good daily close below the uh, 2,729 territory. And uh, uh, then, yep, this would also place uh, the price below Below its 21 EMA here on the daily chart and more sellers could see uh, an opportunity here to step in. However, we will remain careful near this uh, this upside support line. Let me just show you where it's coming from. Uh, this one's coming from the lowest point of 2011. So basically this long term upside support line kind of continued to act as, as uh, kind of continue to uh, hold uh, the, the price from moving lower. So in a way, for now, uh, what we're going to do here is, uh, coming back to the daily chart, we're going to stick to this these two uh, barriers here. So if we get a break through the lower side of, of this little range, kind of uh, the, the 2,729 zone, then yes, we will aim for this uh, long-term upside support line that I just showed you. Now, in case this pushes higher, and um, looking at the cash index right now, we can see that the price is roughly balancing at the same place where it ended yesterday so basically at around 2800 levels so in order for us to get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels we would prefer to see a push above the high of last week which is around the 2879 80 zone roughly around there and then we could um, consider some higher levels but we'll be very careful near these 100 and the 200 emas um, and then we'll take it from there for now uh, it's stuck here so yep let's continue continue observing the price action. Uh, another index, but this time is a dollar index. Now, I looked at this one previously and kind of uh, what I was mentioning that we I was saying to you guys to keep a close eye on this little level here, the 99.91 uh, level, because that was the high of the 20th of February, or in other words, the highest point of February. So at some point it kind of acted as a good area of resistance as you can see up until here kind of up until the 20th of april it was acting as a good area of resistance but then it kind of popped higher and continues to push to the upside uh previously as well i've mentioned that for us to get comfortable with more comfortable with higher levels we would like to see a push above the 109 100 100.93 zone here which is the uh, current highest point of april and then yep uh we could maybe uh, aim for 
for further upside. However, for now, we're very careful. Yes, it pushed above the 99.91 zone, so that's good news. So in a way, this could continue traveling higher. It could even test this 100.93 level, and then we'll take it from there. If we see a daily close above this, then yes, we will aim for higher levels for now. Um, it is pushing higher, but uh, we'll remain careful near the 100.93 zone. In terms of the downside, if this by any chance somehow reverses sharply to the downside and closes below the 99.91 uh, zone, then, well, I mean, brace yourselves. We could see maybe a bit of a, a decline again, so keep your eyes on this one. Now, gold. Uh, gold, um, although the dollar is rising still, the... Uh, Gold is still kind of wearing its safe haven suit and uh, this this commodity to that which everybody refers to when the times are difficult. So uh, this morning we were uh, I was talking about this pair and we were trading around here basically uh, just slightly above that 1704 uh, territory. And what I was saying that in a way this could continue pushing higher. Uh, we will aim for the one, 17. Uh, 1723 zone so this is exactly what the uh, the, the commodity is currently testing um, it did overshoot it slightly but as you can see uh, the 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 kind of the the com the precious metal uh, is drifting back down kind of currently balancing on this level so on the 1723 zone so which is the uh, the the high of the December 12th 2012 so I've managed to kind of memorize this one there's a lot of 12s in there so um, and if I'll just show you what I was talking about here guys uh, if I go back into history this is the level that I was talking about so basically that's the uh, December uh, 12th uh, 2012 so basically 12 12 12 um, and uh, now you can see that it's currently getting a hold up here so the it will be quite interesting to see if we can actually push further north um, for now if you manage to capture this move higher that's wonderful um, the only thing is probably remain very careful and cautious near this barrier near the 1723 uh, zone if we get a nice daily close above this then yep we could see this one continuing with its uh, drift north uh, because we do have some good interesting levels here like the 1747 or even above that the 1754 levels uh, the 1754 is the highest point of uh, the highest point of November 2012 so also keep keep that in mind uh, but if it stays below this territory now, again, I'm not saying that we're going to turn bearish, uh, but we'll probably take a bit more, a bit of a more cautious approach. So, uh, yeah, and uh, that's why for now we're just going to continue observing this one. And, uh, well, again, we're still more bullish than bearish on this one, but uh, now, given that it, we're seeing a bit of a, a hold up near the Mm, near this this barrier near the 1723 zone then well now it would be quite interesting to see if we can actually um, get a nice um, daily close above it so keep your eyes on that one <clears throat> so um, w, uh, sorry w, Brent oil so Brent oil um, I talked about this one this morning we were pushing above this barrier the lowest point of March uh, which is around the 70 21.64 uh, zone um, the the price is currently above it, so yep, that's good news. However, it's very close. So in a way, uh, it's it seems that the bulls want to push this one higher, but the the bears are really struggling here. Or sorry, should, should I say the bulls are really struggling, and uh, the bears are kind of like not allowing them to move further north. However, um, for now, for now, at this point in time, it seems that there could still be a chance for this one to drift higher. But be very careful, guys. Um, probably the suggestion here is right now keep your eyes on today's close where this uh, this commodity will close and if it stays above this territory then yep maybe we could see a bit more upside here in the coming uh, or let's say maybe tomorrow however um, as we know Friday sometimes is a bit of a, a devastating day so uh, let's see, uh, Fridays can sometimes be uh, one-way traffic, so um, yeah, be very careful then and have your stop loss in place. Um, Ethereum. So I've looked at a, a few cryptos recently. Ethereum. I've also touched on this one, and uh, what I was saying that, in a way, uh, all eyes were on this uh, short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 13th of March. You can see that we had a nice kind of re rejection from around here, from this territory, not exactly from this upside line, but near this area. So we'll just 
take that. Um, but the main question here is right now is can this barrier here, the high of um, the high of last week, can it be uh, can it be overcome? So um, the big question here is if we do get a nice push and we do get a daily close above this, then yes, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high. And the next target, of course, is the psychological 200 level. And slightly above that, we do have this 208 zone, which is which marks the low of the 27th of February and the uh, the high of the 9th of March. So uh, this is also let me just quickly double check. Yes, that's that is the low of the 27th of February. Initially, I thought kind of maybe it could be the lowest point of February, but uh, still a good important level to consider. But first, if we do get a pop above pop above this level and we do get a close above this barrier, then uh, consider the the 200 level as the next potential target. Uh, and like I said, if, if that's not enough, then the next little level to aim for would could be around the 208 zone. In terms of the downside, still the same game plan remains. We need to see a drop below this territory here before we could uh, examine lower levels. And this territory is around 166 level so keep your eyes on that one now then jumping into a few pairs a d c h chef so let me just get rid of a few of the lines here remove uh here but um so from the shorter term perspective you can see that the pair is popping higher and is currently testing the um, or should I say it's already currently above and currently kind of flirting with this 0 0.6207 mark, uh, which is the uh, previous highest point of April. So now the pair has managed to create a new high for uh, for April. Let's see if the pair can stay above this previous high. Now, because if it's going to stay and, and the daily candle is going to stay above this territory, above this level, then there is a good chance for this one to drift a little bit higher. Now, however, with that move high, we need to be very careful because we do have a bit of a tentative downside line here that could provide some resistance. So in a way, if this pushes higher, this is where the holdup might occur. So if it struggles, for example, to overcome the uh, this downside line, then we could see something like this, of course, um, not like this, but like this, basically. So where we could see a bit of a slide back down here. So that's, of course, in the situation. In the scenario, if first we get a nice daily close above this territory, above this previous highest point of April, near the 0 0.6207, and then if it if the pair struggles to overcome this downside line taken from the high of the 1st of January. Um, if, of course, this downside line gets broken, then, well, this is where uh, more buyers could get a little bit more comfortable. And especially if the uh, the rate climbs above the 0 0.6347 mark, which is the high of the 4th of March. And also, to be honest, is the, isn't that the highest point of March? Uh, yes, that is the highest point of March as well. So basically very good potential level to consider, uh, especially potential barrier uh, for, for the upside after a break of which we could consider some uh, some more upside. So all eyes are on this level right now. Let's see how this is going to play out. But for now, for now, guys, um, it's very tricky. It's very, be very careful. Yes, it is leaning more to this, towards the upside, but the upside might get up, get uh, limited near this downside line. Uh, now, US dollar against the South African rand, something that you probably don't look at very often, but just probably very good to uh, to mention. Um, so it pushed higher. It um, the high that we had here in April uh, is around, still is around 19.34. 35, roughly around there. Um, the pair kind of after reaching this level it in the beginning of, of April it started reversing back down uh, drifted all the way here towards this level the 17.84 zone and then kind of reversed back to the upside and now it's currently very close to this uh, highest point of April so near the 19.34 mark so roughly around there guys uh, you mark it on your charts but the big question here is can it push higher can it move uh, all the way here above this level so Again, for now, probably the main folk, the main uh, kind of option here is to uh, play the waiting game because if this barrier is too much to overcome for this pair, we could see a bit of a decline here, and we could be getting ourselves a very nice range here. So, so that's why. Um, and from the very short-term perspective, if if you would like to play the downside here, you could keep an eye on the uh, yesterday's. 
uh, yesterday's low uh, near the 18.7150 uh, level and then yep a break below this could in a way uh, open the door towards uh, some slightly lower areas so yep keep your eyes on this one very interesting developments here because again uh, looking at this chart and looking at the monthly chart this basically so far as much as data as we have this is basically the all-time high so if you can imagine that somewhere around 1974 we were uh, around the one uh, one to one ratio one dollar one one South African Rand this is how far it went in history so even this spy if we managed to overcome this spike here uh, back in 2002 and also we managed to overcome this spike in 2016 so um, basically the uh, the pair is hitting all time new um, all time highs, um, but the question can it go further? Can it overcome its all time high near the 19.34 mark? So, yep, uh, keep your eyes on this one. Very interesting uh, times we're living through right now, um, but uh, yeah, uh, might present some opportunity, but at the same time, be very careful it, as it could wipe you out very quickly as well. Um, GBP Aussie. Now, uh, I've talked about this one this morning and basically what I was saying that to keep an eye on this upside support line um, and what I was saying as well that if we get a drop below this level right here, the 1.9291, then yes, there could be a chance for this one to drift further south. Now, at the moment, we are seeing a strong move, a very strong move lower. Um, so basically, this upside line got it got finally violated correctly and most it seems that most likely that we might get a close below the subside support line however all eyes are on this lev level on this barrier that I've talked about uh, in my videos recently um, so basically this is the area that we're keeping a close eye on because we need to see a nice good drop below this in order uh, to aim for uh, further declines so keep your eyes on this one guys uh, we need to see a nice good uh, ideally we would prefer to see a daily close below this area and then yep we could get a little bit more comfortable with further declines for now uh, continue monitoring this yes it is drifting lower so let's see if it can continue moving um, south um, G GBP Euro now uh, something that I haven't looked at for quite a while and uh, basically last time I talked about this one was uh, I was mentioning this level right here the 1.1305 because what I was saying that if we get a nice uh, drop and ideally if we get a nice daily close below this then yep we could see some deeper extensions to the downside this week as you can see uh, the pair drifted lower broke this area but never managed to close uh, below it so and yesterday the pair kind of uh, climbed back to the upside here and now we are seeing uh, a bit of a a bit of a move higher here so uh, in a way what we're going to do here is uh, previously I had this level that I just removed um, but now we would like to see a push above this 1.1515 zone that's the high of last week in order to aim for higher levels because again we rather be safe than sorry guys because a push above this level would confirm a forthcoming higher high and uh, yep higher levels could be met because as you can see today it did try to move higher but got held by the 100 EMA and the 200 EMA here on the daily chart so basically these two lines now coincide and, for, and form a very strong area of resistance so if we do get a break above this and we also clear the high of the uh, last of last week then yep higher levels could be met for now We'll continue observing this one. And in terms of the downside, as you probably understood, we need to see a nice good close below the 1.1305, and only then we will aim for lower levels. Euro NZD. Euro NZD, I talked about this one th this morning as well, so just a quick update. Um, this morning we were still hanging around here near the this barrier, and let me just jump into a four-hour chart. Uh, we were still hanging around here near this barrier, near the upper side of the range, and this is what I was talking about yesterday and today, of course, in the morning. Um, but what I was saying that in a way we could be seeing ourselves a nice range here. So for now, this is exactly where we're seeing. Um, so we're seeing uh, we we can see we can see that the Euro NZD is drifting lower and getting closer to the lower bound of the range. The big question here is, can we see a break below this? Now, um, 
Ideally, of course, we would prefer to see a daily close below this territory, but we will start considering uh, the downside at least even if we get a, a close of a four hour candle below this territory, below this 1.7842 zone. So keep your eyes on that one. Uh, again, if we see a four hour candle close below this, then uh, well, we'll yes, we will start considering the downside, but we'll be, we'll be very careful. Uh, whereas with the, uh, and we would then uh, monitor the daily candle and see if it actually can close as well. But for now, guys, be very careful here. Uh, let's see how this is going to play out. But um, yep, it's getting closer to this to this lower side of the little range here. Um, and finally, Euro USD. So this one is a tricky one. So uh, basically, we got a slide. Uh, so perfect. So yep, that's wonderful. We got a test of this 1.0777 territory, and we also got a, a drop below this. However, as you can see, the bulls are really fighting uh, hard in order to uh, push this one back above this 1.0777. Don't get me wrong, the day is not finished. If the... Um, if the dollar index continues to rise, uh, we could see uh, this one falling here. We could see Euro USD sliding back down. So that's why for now, uh, yes, uh, keep your eyes on the price action here. Uh, if we finally, if we say, if we get a nice strong move below this 1.0777, then yes, further declines could be possible. And this is where we will aim for the uh, lowest point of March near the 1.0633 mark. So keep your eyes on this one. Very interesting developments here. Um, if you want, you can also keep an eye on the daily chart just to be on more on the safe side, because as you can see, this level here, the 1.0777 keeps on acting as good area of support. It keeps getting violated, but uh, especially got violated here in the beginning of April, but as you can see, uh, the bulls managed to kind of sh shift the rate back above it. So the same story is happening right now. We did get a drop below it, but the bulls managed to quickly kind of push the rate back above it. So we would like to see a daily close. Uh, of course, we will start considering the downside if we get a nice strong uh, drop on the four hour candle below this territory. But if we get a daily close now, this is where it could become a little bit more exciting for the sellers, guys. So keep your eyes on this one. So um, I really hope you found it useful, guys. Thank you very much for all your support, for all your likes and, 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 and comments and everything, guys. So, yep, uh, I really appreciate that. And um, basically, till tomorrow i would say because uh yeah i mean guys i hope you stay safe i hope you stay careful with all this craziness in the market that was ha that's happening right now and tomorrow could be quite an interesting day um just to kind of quickly double check the figures um by the way the um yes the initial jobless claims from the us came out uh worse basically slightly worse than expected um but um, I wonder if the market is actually taking that into account. So uh, let's uh, either maybe it, because it, the because the figure kind of is not is yes it is more than the forecast but not by much, um, not by much as it uh, as it could be. Uh, but uh, yeah, maybe the market is seeing a bit of positivity in this on all this. So let's continue observing the price action in everything, and uh, yep, we'll catch up tomorrow or and catch my video tomorrow at around six o'clock GMT time, maybe around a little bit after that. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll have a look at some of these instruments, some new ones, and then we'll take it from there. Thank you very much, guys, and bye-bye.